Hola mi gente, welcome back to another episode of Amigas Teaching Amigas. In today's episodes, I am going to be showing you how to prep and glitter your tumbler or different ways to doing so. So I hope you guys came prepared. In the meantime, go ahead and introduce yourself if you're new here. You know, we are all amigas. We all grow together here. We are here to learn, create, and inspire one another. So if you are new, let us know where you're from. What is it that you do? What is it that you sell? And what brought you here? I would love to know. Uh, how about we get started? Today I'm gonna be showing you how to prep and glitter your tumblers. There's many different ways that many, many, many crafters use. I will be showing you some of my favorite, some that are not really my favorite, but, what? and some that I have tr never really tried, but I've heard that it's something that you can do. I'm only gonna be doing it in two tumblers at the moment. Just again, I don't want this to be a four hour long video. So I'm gonna try to be as straight to the point as possible possible the techniques that i am going to be showing you today can be also used on acrylic tumblers like your starbucks tumblers you guys know that i prep my tumblers all the time that way as well so just know that if you do not have a stainless steel tumbler that's okay you can also practice this different ways on prepping your tumblers and glittering your tumblers on any other uh, tumbler whether it's acrylic or glass or whatnot in order for you to have a good surface so that way all the additional materials that you are going to be adding for them to actually adhere properly into your tumbler so that way they do not repel when you epoxy you gotta make sure that you have a very a very well prepped area now not not every crafter not everyone preps I have done tumblers that I've not prepped. I have tumblers that I have prepped, but I just think overall, personally, having a prep surface really cuts my time when it comes to like epoxy and you just to make sure that I am providing my customer a quality product that will that will you know be good for a lot of years. Uh, sometimes when you don't prep proper, properly, you know, the epoxy might start lifting and you, you don't, you don't want to have an upset customer over that. So if you can just take a little bit of your time to do the prepping, I would highly, highly recommend that you do. In order for you to prep, you can either use a sanding sheet like this. This one is a 220 fine finishes. Um, sanding sheet. I actually cut this one. It normally came like an eight by nine, eight by ten sheet. Uh, I cut this one just because I didn't need the whole thing. So you can use a sanding sheet to do that, or they also sell a sanding block. I personally, if I'm too lazy, my husband made a little attachment for me. Um, but sometimes I feel lazy and having to be going back and forth back and forth to make sure that every surface is sanded can take a long time so what i'm going to do is i am going to be showing you how to do it with just the sanding block because that's easiest than doing the sheet but i'm also going to be showing you the way that i do it with the sheet all right so you're literally all we are trying to create is uh we want to remove the shininess of the stainless steel tumbler. So we are going to sand it down as much as I can until I no longer have any uh, shininess to it. I recommend that you just stay in one direction. Don't go, you know, remember when you went in kindergarten and they tell you, you know, color to the same side. Don't go up and down and side to side. Same way with your with this. <laughs> it had an extra layer that I didn't take off. Wait, you were sending that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a workout, you guys. You are going to be tired. I don't have these. I don't have these guns for nothing. Like sanding a tumbler is it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work. So. Many companies actually 
sell you a prep tumbler already if you do not want to do it on your own you can uh you're just gonna have to pay a little bit extra for that um so it, it just depends on your budget guys if you guys have the ability to pay for a prep tumbler then go for it save yourself the the tedious job of having to prep truly want you to know is that try your best not to touch the, the surface of your tumbler with your hands why because hands as you can see by this tumbler i have a lot of oil stains already because my body releases oils and if you prep your tumbler and you wash it or you use alcohol for to clean the surface or whatnot but then you go ahead and touch it and then you want to work afterwards those oils will remain in your tumbler and they will prevent for you to be able to properly glitter or epoxy your tumbler a lot of the times when you're epoxying and you touch it and there's oils you leave your oils in the on the tumbler that will create a lot of fish eyes for you um sometimes the mud patch will not adhere properly so if you have a little towel or something um if, if you can wear gloves wear gloves i just don't know how to work with gloves uh they drive me crazy and i don't i i don't really use them un unless i'm you know epoxy and then you want to make sure that you get the, that edge. Do not forget about that edge, you guys. That edge is important. Same as the bottom. Especially if you have tumblers that have these little um, creases right here. Make sure that you go in there slightly. And you remove, again, the shininess from that area. So there is the first one. Let me. This is a comparison with the other one. As you can see, this one, again, it's still shiny, but now we have a surface that has those um, groups, as Mr. Yaya will call it. Mm. Therefore, it would be a lot more easy what you for... Said? Groups? You said groups, no? Grooves. Grooves? With a P, is, somebody spell it there. Groove. Groove, like... Like lines, strikes, groups, topes, hoyos, lineas. I don't know how to the other way to explain it. Group. I don't know. G R O O V. Okay. Something, something. I guess. Our accent is getting in the way of things, you guys. Yes. <laughs> the first one, I place it down. And then I grab a little uh, tumbler stand. This is, we actually, this is one that I saw on my shop. Uh, but whatever you use to be able to, you know, grab your tumbler easily, easily, go ahead and wipe it down with alcohol. We need to wipe it with a solvent that is not clean. And look, because we want to remove all that extra dust that is generated by the sanding. Next way will be for you to do it with a sanding sheet if you have one. You could do the same thing, and grab it and go up and down, up and down, and do the same thing that you did. Uh, cost wise, it's it just depends on your hardware store because you can purchase this by a packet and it will be a little bit more, but it's gonna have a longer life than a sanding block. The sanding block to my <laughs> to my perspective to my point of view in my opinion it doesn't last as long as if you were to use in a sanding sheet but that's just me all right so i'm gonna give you guys you guys can again do that me personally i have this little 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 trick my husband created this too for me put it in your little uh power tool or in your husband's power tool I put it in the inside the tumbler like this and then I just grab my sanding sheet and I hold it down as I am pushing the power tool
to grab the same towel that I used to wipe it down just because, again, I don't want to touch it with my hands. And I just make sure that everything is sanded down. Again, for this one, the pattern is going to look a little bit different. Why? Because I am going horizontally. For the other one that we did, I was going vertical. Vertical, vertically, vertically. Entonces, it is gonna be a little bit different, but I still get that. Just helps me do it faster. I still have to come in and do just a little bit more on the bottom, and then if you have a tumbler that again it has this little edge right here, I just go in and with my little sanding sheet or even with my sanding block. And I just make sure that I remove the shininess from that as well. Okay. Once it's done, as you can see, I already touched it. So, I mean, I don't know if the camera can take it, but there's, I can already see my fingerprints there. But that's okay because I am still going to be, I still have to clean it. So, I'm going to, again, grab my alcohol. Spray it with, spray my tumbler with alcohol, le voy a echar alcohol y lo vamos a limpiar, okay? Another way that you guys can prep your tumblers is there is a paste. It's called final sanding and it's a paste that you add to your tumbler and all you got to do is scrub the surface down. That actually works very well if you want to make an epoxy tumbler and turn it into a, like a matte tumbler. That uh, thing is really useful to use. Uh, I personally do not prep my tumblers that way because it re will require a lot of that paste. It is not very affordable to purchase and it will take me a lot longer for me to add the paste and scrub it down and do all of that. Si quiero ponerme a lavar trastes, pues mejor me pongo a lavar trastes en lugar de estar ahí. <laughs> I've always told you guys that for me, it 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 all comes down to whatever works for you i do these classes and i teach you what i know but ultimately what might work what? for me ultimately uh, again Cállate. Uh, my <laughs> my work for me might not work for you and that's completely fine because that's you know it's part of us learning and creating and doing what we love to do Prepping also entitles you adding the color that you're going to need in all of that. It's not just you sanding your tumbler. You can finalize your prepping by adding either one, a spray paint of coating of the color that you are going to be using to glitter your tumbler, right? So I do recommend that if most of us use a white base, but if you truly want the color of your glitter to show through, I don't know why it's so bright, to show through and to really reflect that color, I recommend you matching the color of your tumbler to the color of your glitter. As far as spray painting the tumbler, that is my preferred way of doing it because it just makes it one a lot easier for me to just go in there and spray paint it and leave it there to dry and uh, and two uh i feel that it allows me to do less coats than if you were to use it the other way another way that you can do it nowadays they have um paint that you can utilize to actually paint your surface this is the one that i personally use this is the one that I recommend it is a Rust-Oleum two times paint and primer. This minimizes the amount of coatings that I have to do when I spray paint. But again, another way of you to do things is by using acrylic paint. Or I have seen people that they use um, the same paint that you use for your house. Um, so in this case, I am going to be showing you the difference of prepping between a spray paint and a acrylic paint. Okay. Uh, again, there's many, many other forms. There's a lot of companies that they sell. 
There's a lot of companies that they sell uh, specific paint for that. Uh, but honestly, I have also tried just the little samples that they sell at the Home Depot. And those have actually worked for me as well. Cost effective wise, going a route like this will be a better way to go if you're trying. If you're working on a budget like me. But again, some people prefer to do acrylic paint better. Some people prefer to buy the high and expensive brands that are meant to be for tumblers. I am going to have Mr. Yaya go and spray paint one tumbler for me while I use acrylic paint for the other because you do have to let it dry for 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to move to acrylic paint. This is not my favorite thing to do, especially, it, I mean, it works if you are doing a small area, but for you to do a full tumbler with it, I am not a fan of it. I, I, I'm not a fan, but it's okay. We are going to figure this out together. And I truly wanted to show you a, a difference in one and the other and how it looks when you use one or the other. So I am going to be using this one because this is the only green that I have. And this is the glitter that I am going to be teaching you how to adhere. Uh, it is Green Topical Dream by Chunky Monkey Glitter. I am an affiliate with her. So if you want to go check out high quality glitter, um, go check her out. And if you click the link in my bio or use Yaya's Hobby Shop, you will be saving 50% in your order. Most of my glitter that I have is from her. I absolutely love her and her brand and every product that she offers. Right? And then I am also going to be using this uh, one and a half quarter of, a, of an inch brush. I absolutely love this one specifically if you're going to be using um acrylic paint or mud putch or whatnot because it is so large and it applies very evenly uh the set comes with two uh it is a little bit on the higher side but this will last you a long time it truly if you take care of them if you're just like me you're probably it's probably not gonna last you that long but if you take care of them it's gonna last you forever you can also find these ones on my amazon storefront and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab our acrylic paint and then with our brush we are just gonna try and cover as much as much as we can with the surface with the surface the surface and you don't want to put way too much because acrylic paint can crack and you're gonna have to sand the surface down again and redo it so just go easy on it. This is why I love these brushes as well because it just, it's so big that it just goes through like bigger spaces of surface. I'm going to go get my heat gun so that I can speed up the process of the drawing. If you guys have questions... See, Mr. Yaya knows that I don't take care of my brushes. You just order those brushes and you're just going to destroy it in one take. That's oh, why yeah, I brought... yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, just yeah. brought you water and soap. He knows me so well. <laughs> yep. Can you bring the heat gun, ma'am, please? I called you, mi amor. Five dollars. I called you, mi amor. Not enough. You should do that every single time. What kind of paint are you using? So for this one right here, let me put them over here. For the white one, we are using the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Primer and Paint um, Spray Paint. And then for the green one, I am using just normal um, acrylic paint. I'll tell you why I don't like using acrylic paint. Mainly because it freaking cracks and it it's very easy it's very easy for it to peel off so i don't use it unless i'm doing very small surfaces where i want to glitter and stuff like that but if i can like stay away from it i'll stay away from it so first of all first rule so you want to check that 
and make sure you hear that every single spray can is paint spray can will have that marble inside that's what helps mix the paint inside with the solvent so you take it like really really well that's one of the tricks because if not uh you're gonna spray and it's gonna be clear first and you don't want that that's gonna create or sometimes it creates little yeah well that's that's the tip so this is the perfect example because if the tip is dirty like this one it might create not a fine mist of paint but i want to show the biggest secret or technique which is the distance the distance and how much paint you apply to whatever it is that you're painting. If you get too close, you're gonna leave marks and the paint is gonna run, okay? That, you know, I went really close and it's a really thin line and it has some like overspray here. So if you're really close, you're gonna do that and on the edge it's gonna run. So when you spray paint, when you're doing spray paint, let me fold this a little bit so I don't spray just stuff like that thing. You want to spray from about 10 to 12 feet. Feet? Away. I mean inches away. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Good luck with that. No. So anyway, you got it. Just It's about 10 to 12 inches mm -hmm. away from whatever it is that you spray painting. Uh, it doesn't matter if your fan... Six. Is, is wide and you're spraying more into the air than the actual thing but that would create a really thin layer and it would not run so when you spray it should be you see even if you have spots that are not painted once it dries a little bit you can come again with another coat and spray paint those spots even if it takes three coats rather for you to do that than trying to get it all in one shot and then another thing that i learned i get i still get like drips and stuff like that i think the biggest mistake that i did when i first started was that i would go right like i would do everything in one single spray right and one thing that Mr. Yaya taught me is that you kind of have to work in section. Yes. I want to start spraying inside <coughs> here. The only problem is that, of course, I wear gloves because you need to over spray it. Let me just make sure I don't spray my hand. Right? So you don't want to stop there. So you spray outside and then move and stop also outside the piece. So you go like, and then again again okay and you see you're getting I, my stop spray painting i probably am okay it's not perfect but if you try to get it to the color like in one pass then it's gonna run do the one pass right here so that they can see yeah just yeah I li that's how i do yeah, it yeah yeah that's and you can see it's already i don't know if you can but it's running Right, because you want to get it all in one pass, then you no, know, you're gonna have that problem. Okay, so the easiest you start fine, and this because it's so thin, it's already almost dry to the touch. So you can come back again with a second layer. In like 15 minutes or less? No, in less. I, I like almost immediately after. Okay, and that will not run. And please don't spray inside your house. Well, that's why I told you to go spray paint outside. This one is the tumbler that we spray painted. As you guys can see, it was one coat and is ready to go. It is perfect. It's not runny. And this one, as long as I let it dry for a couple of minutes, it will be, it will be ready to go and I don't have to worry about it. Now, for the one that I did with the <laughs> acrylic paint, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's there's still some streaks, streaks uh, and there's still some plate areas where 
I need it to focus. There's Where the stainless steel is still showing. So I will have to do a second coat. I'm going to move on to the next step. I am going to use two different methods that are kind of the, sim the same in a way. One will be using Mud Pudge. And then for the second tumbler, again, this is the technique that I do 100%. For the second one, we are going to be using polyacrylic. Uh, I have used polyacrylic before when I do the dry snow glove effect. Uh, I know that glitter gets adhered to it as well, but I've never really done it for a tumbler in that way. So I'm gonna do half with Mod Podge, half with polyacrylic and see how that works. The, I'm going to use the first one, which will be Mod Podge. This is the most typical way for you to adhere your glitter. And again, I am going to be using the big one. So I am just going to go off <laughs> just a little bit thing, or a lot. When it comes to your Mod Podge or any method that you use, you don't want to over pour any of your adhesive, especially if you're working with glitter. Why? Because when you put a thick surface of Mud Podge or any other method that you use, it will the drying time will take a lot longer. Sometimes, especially if you're using fine glitter, if you have a thick coat of Mud Podge, you will it will be make it look very clumpy. So. I always say working layers. So the first one, just make it as thin as you can. Depending on the temperature that you have around your house, never forget the bottom, by the way. Depending on the temperature that you have in your house, you gotta work quick because Mud Patch will dry and the other stuff will dry quick as well, except for epoxy. So don't overthink it. Just add a little bit. In this case, like I said, I'm doing half and half, so that is why I'm not going all the way down. And then we are just going to pour before this thing dries, okay? It's very important that once you're done, grab your, your pencil and tap, tap the tumbler. So that way you can remove all the excess glitter. And it's important that you do that because if you are going to go in and do an extra layer of, of uh, Mud Podge to add another layer of glitter to make sure that it, your surface is fully, fully covered. If you do not remove that excess before starting, then it will most likely create those um, clumps as well. So, All right. So for the other half, I am going to be using polyacrylic. If you are a crafter that makes ornaments, you already know how to use this technique because it's the same technique that you use when you're trying to make your glitter ornaments. I'm gonna be using the same color just because I do I do not wanna mess a perfectly fine tumbler and I can maybe use this for a water slide class that I have scheduled for the upcoming months. Again, we're gonna use our polyacrylic and this is more liquided liquidy than mud punch so just be careful when you pour be very very as you can see be very careful and again just grab your brush and you don't have to go all crazy with it you just have to do little 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 spots i love this freaking brushes love 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 like I said, with polyacrylic, a little bit different than doing the um, ornaments, just because with the ornaments, there's no ventilation on it. So it does take longer for it to dry when you do the ornaments. In this case, because we have an exposed surface and there is ventilation in the house, it's probably going to dry a lot quicker. You can even touch it to see if it it's tacky or not and then once you feel that is tacky enough then you start to pour your glitter i've never tried it on a tumbler so we are gonna 
We are going to be doing this together. I'm trying to see if you can tell the difference between a mud putch. Adding it with mud putch or adding it with with a polyacrylic and honestly I don't I don't see I don't see a difference I will say though that Mod Podge is more tackier than polyacrylic don't forget to tap to remove any excess all right so this is the first layer of this tumbler as you guys can see, I cannot tell the difference. I honestly cannot tell the difference. So, ultimately, as far as the final outcome, I feel like I prefer Mod Podge still. I feel like I prefer it better. But, I don't know if you guys can see because my camera is not the best. There you go. But you cannot really see a difference. I am probably going to do one final layer. It's very important that you guys, when you are done with glittering a tumbler, that you seal it. Okay? Sealing is a very important part of the way you prep your tumbler. Especially if you're using a white base like this. Because if you're using epoxy, epoxy tends to yellow over time, especially if it's exposed to the sun or the heat or whatnot. So like I've always said, you sealing it, you can seal it with the Mod Podge. You can just add an extra layer of Mod Podge over it. You can seal it with the UV, uh, with the polyacrylic, add an extra layer over it. You can seal it with clear acrylic spray, whatever method you prefer but seal your tumblers especially if this is a white base because then it will most likely turn yellow faster and then you're gonna have customers complaining about the fact that it's turning yellow even though you already told them that they needed to take care of the tumbler all right all right so the next two ways of glitter uh, one I have tried, which is the epoxy method, and the second one I have not tried, which is the acrylic spray method. I am going to do the acrylic spray method first, um, and then I'll do the epoxy because the epoxy is gonna is gonna. If if the acrylic method doesn't work, because again I haven't tried that one, this is the first time experimenting here with you guys. If it doesn't work, I can just epoxy the whole thing and re-glitter it and not mess up a perfectly perfectly good tumbler. So this is the spray paint that I estoy, estoy, that I use. Again, it's from Rustoleum. This is another one of my favorite brands. And it's a two-time Rustoleum, meaning that you will just need one coat to make shit happen. <laughs> Uh, this one is great again if you want to seal your glitter I personally use this for that um, but if you do not have a spray paint acrylic like like a clear glitter a, clear acrylic spray and you just have mud putch or polyacrylic you you can also use those to seal your tumblers in my own preference I would rather use something like this because it's more cost effective and it's a lot easier to just grab a tumbler and spray paint it and leave it there. As to compare if I were to do the polyacrylic or the, or the mud putch, then I would have to get a brush and I would have to just take my time. Um, and it just, it's just, it, for me, it's all about time. You, time is valuable, you guys. And we got to... Find resources and far, find ways to make ira, ya me pinte. to make our tumblers a lot faster because our, our customers, most of them, don't like to wait. So this will be another way. Again, this is the first time that I've tried this technique. So if it's a total mess and it's a shit show, just know that this is my first time doing it, okay? Uh, 
I saw someone doing it on TikTok and I thought it was really cool because again, who doesn't want to do something as quick as this? And pretty much what you're doing, what Mr. Yaya said earlier, we are going to be, sh we are going to shake, 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 senora. Your acrylic paint. Shake, 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 senora. Your acrylic paint. So just shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. We got to make sure that there are no, no particles in there that are, that are stuck together. So that way we can have a more even, 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 even spray. I am going to be using green tropical dream by chunky monkey glitter i am an affiliate if you use code yaya's hobby shop you can save 15 percent on your entire purchase and it's this beautiful chunky uh green hopefully i don't make a mess <laughs> we are going to the thing about this is that as soon as you spray you have to go in with your glitter, so you have to be quick, okay? So, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna do a big area. I'm not doing a big area just because I'm scared that this is not gonna work out the way that I want it to. And then I am going in with my glitter. I recommend that you do it outside because, whoo, Lord Jesus Christ, I am gonna be so happy later. <coughs> Don't be a yaya. Don't do it inside of your house. <coughs> okay, we're gonna stop it. <coughs> then I'm gonna grab something where I can just remove all the excess. Now, it, it is very important. Again, I am using chunky glitter, okay? Chunky glitter is one of the hardest type of glitters to epoxy if the surface is not flat. So if your surface is not flat, it's going to be very difficult and you are going to be needing a lot of layers of epoxy to have an even surface. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab parchment paper. You can find these, you can find this at any, any store. You're gonna grab a couple, a little piece, grab our tumbler and we are going to roll our tumbler on the parchment paper. And then we are going to, this one is tampered so it's very difficult for it to fully, fully be there. So I just like to press down on here and then I just rub in and roll my tumbler to make sure that they're, all of the chunky pieces are becoming flat on my surface. This will minimize the amount of time that you epoxy. It would minimize the amount of epoxy that you use. So if you use chunky glitter, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you do this. As you can see, this area has been um, flattened and this area, I don't know if, I don't know how the camera can tell. This area have not. So if you can see there's still glitter sticking out compared to the area that I already flattened. So don't be afraid to go in again and roll it. Again, massage it, make sure that everything, even the bottom guys, do not forget about the bottom. Make sure that it is fully, 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 fully flat. Our cups need a little love too. Denle un masajito, que se sientan amados. And then I go in, if there's still just a little bit of them, I go in with my fingers and I flatten them flatten them as much as possible. And there you go. It worked. It worked. Does it have a lot of coverage? Not really. There's still some areas that don't have any glitter glitter on them, but 
It worked. Mirala, who knew? Now I am going to be going in with my epoxy now so you guys can see. When I'm using chunky glitter like this, I personally prefer to use the epoxy method to do it because the epoxy will tighten it for you very, very well. The problem when doing the epoxy method is that you will have to wait for it to cure. Some epoxy takes a couple of hours to cure. Some epoxy takes a couple of days to fully, fully cure. Um, on the average, my epoxy in particular, it, I need to let it dry for a minimum of 12 hours before I can reapply. So that is the only reason why I don't do that. Little disclaimer here. Wear your PPE. Wear your PPE. Do not be a yaya. Normally, when you are working with uh, items that have fumes like that, like spray paint or epoxy, it is very important that you use your protective wear so that way all those gases that it releases doesn't go, you don't inhale them or you don't, you, they don't go through like your eyes or your skin or whatnot and that way you don't have any health issues when you get old, like as the time progresses and you keep on using them. Do not be a yaya, take care of yourself because your health is important. I just personally do not like it. I ever after since I got COVID, it's just been really hard for me to use any of that. Um, so we are, I am not going to use it, but you should use it for your own, for your own health. Uh, this is the epoxy that I use. Sorry that it's a little bit dirty, but this is artist resin from CCDIY. Uh, I have used others, so when it comes to epoxy, it's very much a personal choice. You really have to try different brands, different qualities, um, to see which one works best for you because a lot of it comes to play with epoxy. The weather, the humidity, what is it that you're doing exactly? So when it comes to an epoxy, you just have to find the one that works for you. I do recommend that you don't go all big and buy gallons like this or half a gallon or a gallon. If you can find yourself a supplier that offers sample sizes or smaller sizes, just go for that option so that way you can try it and see if it truly works for you. And again, as far as the curing process go, every epoxy is different. Some of them cure in an hour, some of them cure in a couple of hours, some of them take days to cure. So make sure that before you utilize any of any products that you read the instructions carefully, that you wear your PPE and that you do not buy bigger quantities because if you don't like it, then you're gonna be stuck with all of that. And for something like this, you don't really need a lot of epoxy. So I'm only going to be needing maybe 10 mLs. And that's maybe a little bit too much because, again, when you are just using epoxy to adhere your glitter, you do not need a thick, thick, thick coat of epoxy. I pour over of epoxy. And like I said, I over pour my, my epoxy, but you don't really need a lot. And actually, since I'm here, I'm just going, you just want to go over it very, very thin. I'm just using what I have, the excess that I have on my hands. But I over poured you guys. Remember that I added more than I needed. Make sure that the rim is fully, fully covered with your epoxy. And I just grab my glitter. I always like to pour from the rim first. Well, in this case, it's epoxy, so it's not going to dry on me quick. 
See what I mean by using epoxy when you use an epoxy when you use chunky glitter? When you use epoxy, when you have chunky glitter, the glitter will automatically flatten with the epoxy. So you don't have to do the parchment technique. I still recommend that if there's a little bit, you do. But you can just go in because it's, a, it's epoxy. Go in with your hand and flatten the little surfaces down. There's going to be very minimal. You won't have crazy amount of glitter sticking out. And that is why I, I prefer using epoxy when it comes to chunky glitter because it truly minimizes the amount of work that I have to do. The only downside about it is that you have to wait for it to cure in order for you to do another layer. But if you are not in a rush to do a tumbler, then maybe this technique will be better for you. But when you use epoxy, I feel like you're going to need less layers of glitter. That's what I meant. When you do it the epoxy way, instead of doing it the other way, just because it, epoxy will fully, fully, fully adhere every single little drop. You saw that if I go like this, I don't have a lot of excess glitter falling off because the glitter will make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to stay you see i didn't even have to use parchment paper for this all right guys well there you have it those are the ways for you to prep and glitter your tumbler let me know what you guys think which technique would you prefer doing have which technique is your favorite i don't see any honestly all the all the techniques that we did today as far as ways to adhere the glitter i think that they all work just fine again it's just a matter of what you prefer because both the four of them worked just as fine both of the tumblers look absolutely stunning and um i don't know see for me i have one is my favorite for one reason and the other one is my favorite for another reasons but which one's your favorite I would like to know in the comments which one was your favorite. If you have done tumblers before, and if you have not done tumblers before, like what would what would be the technique or the method that you guys would do and that you guys will feel comfortable and confident in doing? All right, guys. Well, I am going to go. Thank you so, so Thank much you for... <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you enjoy the class and that you come back next week. Again, I truly hope that you love today's class, that you get the confidence you need to get your business starting for you to learn techniques like this so you can make an income and so that way you can feel empowered and you can, you know, find the thing that you love to do the most. Hope you guys have a beautiful and blessed weekend. Thank you for being here. Bye.